The expectation levels this pre-season for Newcastle United fans is through the roof. Mega money transfer for Sandro Tonali early on in the window set the bar super high for Eddie Howe's men as they look to tackle not just the league campaign after finishing fourth last year but also the Champions League this year. It's going to be the first year back on the big stage for the Toon Army and with a seemingly bottomless war chest that's only restricted by FFP, we're starting to see some telltale signs from Eddie Howe's men of how they're going to set up this year and the sort of tactical versatility that they're trying to adopt to help them navigate all the different fixtures and obstacles that they're going to have in the upcoming season. At any point in the video today, if you laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe to the channel. We're pushing for 10,000 subscribers before the new European season and we cannot do that without your support. I know Newcastle fans really enjoyed the last video we did. Not all of you took to the Lukaku take, which is fair enough, but the principle of that is definitely starting to show itself in this pre-season. So if you do enjoy the stuff here, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down down below and let me know what you think about what we're saying. And let's just get stuck straight into it. There's been a bit of an evolution that we've seen in the Aston Villa game that really did turn a few heads where we didn't see the traditional four at the back. We didn't see their traditional kind of set up from Eddie Howe that we've seen in, you know, previous weeks, I was going to say, but the pre has not been that long, but in his time at Newcastle. And we're starting to see a little bit of a tactical evolution. So we see Newcastle play this game with a quasi three at the back where Trippier is holding a little bit deeper and allowing Target to go much further up with Murphy here being in much more of a right mid position. With Trippier restricting his movement and hanging a little bit further back, it gives the mid field here a little bit more room in the pitch to actually move up and push the shape giving Almiron and Anderson who started the game a lot of versatility and a lot of freedom to cycle around whatever the space was to play around Isak now this kind of shape here I kind of leave Shart a little bit deeper than the other two because Dummett being uh, not really a left back and not really a centre back he is a left centre back of a back five because he's got a little bit of recovery pace and he's left footed you know he's got a wee bit of wee bit of stuff to do out here and Trippi obviously to a much higher degree the same thing but what this shape gives you here is we see this time and time again at elite European football is the ability to control the centre ground in boxes now when you're building boxes across the pitch in this type of fashion the way Newcastle are is it's very important who your wide players are and that they stick to the task at hand because these guys are going to be your out ball on every single occasion when you work the ball down the left and everything gets worked into a crowd because Anderson and Almiron in this kind of shape do get the freedom to roam around and play make with the ball wherever that might be and when you've got two controlling midfielders like Tenali and Bruno, they're going to go everywhere relatively side by side. You need these wide guys to really hold their discipline and really hold their shape so that in the event that you can get the switch of play out, you can do it in as little passes as possible and you can get into some real space where you can then look to go on and cause some teams some real bother. So with this kind of principle now getting coached into the players, particularly the attacking set of players that we have in midfield, the two that are going to play off the striker and then the two controlling midfielders that are going to control the shape of the team and the tempo of the team. Training them in the squad in this manner gives them a lot of versatility and a lot of options because changing the team around this core here is something that's going to be really important for Newcastle to maintain high levels of consistency in not just the results they're getting, but the style of play. Because as different players are going to come in, because Dummett's not going to be starting, there was a little bit of alteration going on with Byrne and Target, who played much more of the game until Harvey Barnes's late addition coming on. But I do feel that Byrne is probably going to be in the best back five that Newcastle can possibly make here. But by having the ability to play Byrne higher up and getting Trippier comfortable in this kind of almost like quarterback position here, you give him a little bit more freedom to pick his moments in games when this kind of position does build up organically he can see it he's got experience Trippier has been around the block knows a thing or two and he'll be able to see the opportunities when he can go into these areas here and cause a mass overload which makes it even more likely that we're going to get somebody on the end of the ball maybe Botman's capable of that kind of thing Burns very capable of doing something similar on this side of the pitch as well or even if the ball's been out on this right hand side again Burn has the versatility and the legs and the vision to see where to come in into the pitch to make that late run and you know 
know, the guy's a giant, so putting balls away isn't going to be much of a problem. So I think that there's a lot of versatility that comes from playing this way. And even if they were to revert into a back four, if they're playing a team that they don't need to be as worried about on the break, maintaining this principle is going to be very, very easy to achieve. And you're really just going to have the problem or the question of how you're going to build that around. Would this be maybe a Cal a Callum Wilson? along with Isak where Wilson would be able to play off of him and then run into these different areas where Wilson and Isak in this friendly definitely alternate alternated in that role with other players playing off them from the first half Almiron and Anderson but equally Anthony Gordon can come into this kind of role as well as one into these little spaces here similarly to that could be Harvey Barnes and Joe Linton, you know, so from this basic box principle that we're starting to see Eddie Howe force into the midfield, I think we're going to see a lot of different patterns and a lot of different rotations because Newcastle do have a lot of players that offer very similar prospects on the pitch in terms of strength, shooting, passing, tackling, all that good stuff in midfield. And it's about how you get the most out of them and how do you play as many of them as possible in an effective manner. And it seems to be that I think Eddie Howe has found this kind of box midfield, almost Red Bull football principle is probably a way to kind of base the strategy on for this coming season for them to play in multiple competitions with multiple different players. And we're probably going to see lots of different combinations if he feels that this strategy is working out successfully for him. And how good is this? The guys at Quinn Bet have enhanced their UK welcome offer when you can now get a free bet up to £35 it's for new customers that sign up only you can check out the full terms conditions on their website quinbet.com or by clicking on the link in the description of this video if you do go on to use Quinbet by clicking on the link in that description you go directly to supporting all the content here and a thank you in advance if you do so it looks really impressive to me but remember folks it is 18 plus and always gamble responsibly it's hard to imagine on this right wing position it wouldn't be Trippier eventually in the best 11. But I'm not, because I don't see Murphy, I don't see Mankio, these guys being good enough to keep this up all season long. I think if you had the pick of the squad, you would have Kieran Trippier in doing that role there. But I do feel that there's maybe a bit of hesitation uh, in the Newcastle um, management, as it were, to maybe leave that defence without Trippier, without Botman, because it was dumb it in from the start. And maybe that's why he played the friendly, but I think it'd be quite feasible to see that Trippier would actually take up this role more often and perhaps we see Newcastle go back into the market for our centre back because that feels the easiest way to really complete this picture and make the whole team feel a little bit more robust and a little bit more Champions League level closer to completion because there's a, a really strong base of the team here and it is just about figuring this formula out to make sure that Newcastle have as good a season as possible because you've not just got Champions League, you've not just got the league but you've also got the League Cup and the FA Cup and with how good this squad is is first 11 basis maybe even two or three of the subs now starting to become real quality in Newcastle the expectations are high and I would love to see Newcastle really go kick ass and take some names this year go and get to a final maybe win a cup or even just get back into that top four again and have a good old kind of stint at the Champions League this year because the last time we were looking at this I was talking about having Lukaku in here and getting another bit of support another forward option to help out with Isak and that was before we really seen this box shape thing happen you know, why is that important you might ask because really when I look at this Newcastle team and the shapes they were playing last year I don't see enough creativity I don't see enough ingenuity if you like creative spark really in this team to make sure that if you don't have somebody like Isak up there that should put away almost every chance he gets then Newcastle could find himself in hot water I know Wilson is good and I know he's just as good as Isak for getting the goals for Newcastle on a individual match basis but I did feel that there was an extra need here for a guy that just takes no prisoners and puts the ball in the back of the net and I think that this kind of evolution here of the tactical play for Newcastle will allow them to interchange strikers a little bit easier because when your chance creation your route to goal becomes a little bit more seamless and a little bit more not quite robotic but much more off the playbook as it were off the training ground then you can plug and play in a number of different players into this position we could even see Joe Linton get back into the striker position in a setup like this if injuries stacked up and the fixture list was brutal, etc. Because the rest of the team would be able to carry on creating the chances and then all you're needing is somebody who's willing and able to follow the team ethic, follow the strategy, follow the playbook and make sure that ultimately when the chances are created, you're going to be good enough to put them away. 
But personally, I do think now that the, the evolution of this shape, probably the missing piece wouldn't be a right wing back. It would be a centre back, somebody to come in and just kind of complete this team out and make it a bit more kind of Champions League level going into those group stages, thinking about getting 9 to 12 points, you know. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section and what you think is the missing piece for this Newcastle team as we see it roll through pre-season. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.